Assalamu alaikum to lecture 4 of taxation and it is investment income. Before I introduce you to this lecture, you need to go back to my lecture 3 if you have missed it out because in lecture 3 I have introduced you to the income tax. How do you calculate income tax as well as different types of income. So I have mentioned in my lecture 3 that there are three separate types of income your income needs to be divided into three separate groups before you calculate tax on it first non saving second saving third dividend savings and dividend income are the ones which we are going to focus in this lecture why because those are small not many types of income falls in this group but for non saving the first category there are so many types of income which falls in that like income from self employment income from employed pension property all those things so that's why those lecture i mean those separate types of income which falls under non saving will be divided into separate lecture so from lecture 5 onwards we'll be discussing non savings income separate types of non saving one will be for employed one will be for self employed one will be for uh, property income one for pension like that but only for savings and dividend is just one lecture which is lecture 4 so let's start we are going to focus on savings dividend isa isa i have introduced you in my lecture 3 accrued income scheme is new which is introduced in this lecture and for savings and dividend the rates has been discussed in lecture 3 but i have included it here as well then married couple how do you reduce tax for couples okay planning opportunity for married couple extensively i've discussed in lecture 3 that is how do you transfer personal allowance and all so go back and watch it out and then come to lecture 4 so that you are in a better position to understand and grasp the concept faster if you are new and watching this for the first time not watching my previous lecture you will struggle a little bit you might not understand some terms okay so savings income main savings income are your society building society interest and bank interest but there are other types of income as well one is your interest from national saving and investment okay then interest from guild age securities like government bonds such as treasury stock and ex checker stock interest from quoted company loans stock called company bonds debentures or loan notes basically any type of interest on any type of debt it could be law law loan bond gilded securities then nsi right this type of income comes under savings income remember for nsi okay income from nsi and premium bond winnings are exempt this i have explained to you in lecture three as well there i have gone through the exempt income okay now rates of tax on savings same like non savings 20 40 and 45 percent based on your level of income lower the income lower the tax higher the income higher the tax okay that's how it works now so as I told you in my lecture 3, I have mentioned to you that for savings and dividend, there are some special rates that apply, some special advantages that is given for the taxpayer, which is not there for non savings. So, that now is the right time for me to discuss those special rates for savings and dividend. Okay. Now, starting rate of tax of 0%. If your taxable income, See, I'm saying taxable income. I'm not saying non-income, non-savings income only or savings or dividend. Okay. Overall, if your taxable income and what is this taxable income? That's why you need to watch my lecture three because there I've explained you very clearly what is taxable income, what is income tax liability, what is income tax payable, what are the rates, how do you calculate, how do you draw in the column? Everything is discussed. Major part, 70% of what needs to be discussed has been discussed in lecture three. This is the continuation of it. Okay. So, if your taxable income, the first 5,000 of taxable income, 
is taxed at zero percent. That is known as the starting rate of tax. Why starting rate? Because the first five thousand only. Your tax rate starts with zero percent. Okay. So, if your taxable income falls in the first five thousand category, your income will be taxed at zero percent. Okay. If you are not able to grasp this, because you you are so much uh, familiar with twenty forty forty five twenty forty forty five. That's what we have been calculating in lecture three. What is the zero percent now? This comes for savings income. Okay. First five thousand. If you are not able to understand at this point, hold yourself. Okay. We have questions to do. Lots of questions to do. And at the end of this lecture, you will be a pro at this. Okay. I can guarantee you that much. So, be calm. Next, in addition to this, not only that starting rate of zero percent, they are also giving you what is known as savings income nil rate band. Why nil rate band? Nil means zero. Okay, and it is only for savings income. And we have for dividend income. Rules are little different. First, we'll finish with savings income. Okay, this savings income nil rate band is only applicable for basic rate and higher rate. If you are not able to understand what is basic rate and higher rate, that is also in lecture three. Basic rate is the first thirty-seven thousand seven hundred of the income level falls in basic rate at twenty percent. Then up to one fifty thousand higher rate forty percent, and more than one fifty additional rate forty-five percent. It is only for the basic rate and the higher rate there is a savings income nil rate band, not for additional rate taxpayer. Overall, conclusion is lower your income, more benefit you have. You have to pay less tax also, and also you are able to claim the zero percent. But if you are having a more income, they are not giving you so much of uh, relief and claims and nil rate band and all those things. Okay, now the savings income nil rate band is like this. If you are a basic rate taxpayer, you will get one thousand nil rate band. That means one thousand of your income zero percent. If you are a higher rate taxpayer. 500 see the moment you become higher rate taxpayer from basic your nil rate band also reduces half by 50% that's how it should work higher the income i told you lower the benefit so if your basic rate 1000 of your income will be taxed as 0% if a higher rate 500 of your savings will be taxed as 0% and what if you are an additional rate taxpayer if you are an additional rate taxpayer zero no savings income nil rate band Yes, this facility is only available for basic and higher rate. In fact, all of the facilities that has been there, tax planning could only be done at basic and higher rate only. Additional does not have so much of uh, facilities because they're the highest rate, and no one wants to leave a huge amount of tax, right? So basic and higher rate, thousand and five hundred. You need to remember this when you are doing calculation. You have to keep all these things together in mind. Thousand five hundred starting rate. Then first five thousand, then also the basic rate, the higher rate, additional uh, the level, and how do you say at what level a taxpayer is? For that you have to decide. You have to choose the highest tax band where the taxpayer falls. For example, uh, a person has an income of fifty thousand. Tell me fifty because. Part of fifty thousand falls in basic rate also because they told first thirty seven thousand seven hundred. Okay, but it's less than one fifty, so it falls in the higher rate also. So partly basic rate, partially higher rate. So tell me, but it can fall in one category only, even though income falls in two different categories. And when we calculate income tax, it is based on both the rates. Basic, some of it is in basic, some of it is at higher, twenty forty percent. But you have to choose the band which is the highest. Highest is highest higher rate. Fifty thousand falls in the higher rate because it's more than thirty-seven thousand seven hundred. It's the highest because it's less than one fifty also. It's between that range. So when we say we say that he is a higher rate taxpayer. That's how we decide. If someone is earning twenty thousand, he's a basic rate taxpayer. If someone is earning two hundred and ten thousand, he's an additional rate taxpayer. That's how we decide. Okay. Now, additional rate nil, as I told. Now, coming to applying this rate of tax. So, a question is given. 
you will be given calculation question you need to remember this order always first income tax is calculated on non savings this i have mentioned in my lecture 3 as well because non savings does not have any such facilities like savings or dividends has first income tax on non saving after that for savings this is the order first you will see the starting rate whether it is applicable or not not all the time starting rate is there only some limited circumstances we'll see those when we do questions then after starting grade savings income nil rate ban 1500 and zero based on the income level he is at third normal rate basic higher additional 20 40 45 for both non savings and savings good thing is income tax is same 20 40 45 20 40 45 only dividend is different now starting rate remember not all the time you will be having first 5000 and it is fully savings no maybe part of it is savings maybe part of it is non saving maybe it is entirely non saving and nothing is in saving or maybe it is just dividend so you have to decide okay so in some situations only you might be having your non savings income less than 5000 so if it is less than 5000 this is how you tax first 5000 so let's say the 5000 that you have is entirely savings there is no non saving income the first 5000 is purely just savings income only so those 5000 will be taxed at 0% because i told you first first 5000 of taxable income is taxed at 0% starting rate so if no savings just you have savings income of 5000 only let's say bank interest of 5000 this person is earning bank interest of only 5000 no dividend income no non savings so he is very lucky because the entire 5000 you can use the starting rate will be taxed at 0% is the best position a person could be at but not all the time you might not most of the time you'll be having non savings income also right it's very rare that you will not have even in your examples it's very rare that you will not have no non savings you will be having some non saving savings and dividend so now you have some non savings okay but it's below 5000 that means let's say 3000 of non saving so now how do you tax whatever savings fall in that below 5000 will be taxed at 0%. Not the entire 5000 because that 5000 is made up of non savings and savings. It has both savings and non savings. So let's say 3000 is non saving, 2000 is saving. So only 2000 you can tax at 2, uh, 0%. Remember, non saving, there is no 0% tax. Non saving, tax with 20% only. So first 3000 that is non saving will be taxed at 20%. And the remaining 2000, which is savings, because it falls in that first 5000 3000 plus 2000 first then the next 2000 of savings will be taxed at 0% because it falls in the first 5000 category above that okay anything beyond 5000 will be taxed at what rate 0% no you cannot apply after that starting rate is over your starting rate you have utilized it completely you cannot it is not applicable the moment your income is beyond 5000 and if your non saving is in excess of 5000 let's say 6000 of non savings 5000 of saving then because first 6000 i mean first 5000 out of the 6000 is in non savings nothing is at 0% your savings you cannot tax at 0% so you you don't get that benefit to get that benefit your first 5000 should be savings or even partially it should be savings if the entire 5000 is non saving you don't get any benefit for savings you don't get the starting rate is not applicable for you through questions you will understand this better okay next is income nil rate band understand the order you need to remember the order you cannot jump first always check whether the starting rate is applicable or not if it's applicable apply if it's not applicable go to step 2 see whether income nil rate band is applicable or not if it's applicable good if it's not applicable normal rates standard rates 20 40 45 this for this to decide you have to see the taxpayer if it's a basic rate taxpayer that you will see looking at his total income okay basic rate taxpayer 1000 higher rate 500 
So the next 1000 falls in the same as income nil rate band and taxes 0%. For example, a person is having 6000. First 5000, 6000 of savings income only. First 5000 at 0% Y starting date. Next 1000 out of that 6000 will be again at 0%. Why? Because he is a basic rate taxpayer. He will get the nil rate band also. So you see double benefit. And if it's a higher rate taxpayer, more than 37,700 having income, he will get the nil rate band up to 500, not 1000. So 500 of his savings income taxed at 0%. And additional rate, more than 150,000 of taxable income, no nil rate band. Then third is normal rate. BRB is basic rate band, HRB is higher rate band. Okay. When you are taking this basic rate and higher rate band, no, it is always reduced first by non savings. That means your non saving will utilize it first. After that comes savings and after that comes dividend. This order you have to follow. That's why, it's, that's why when you are applying the rates to savings, it is always dependent on non savings. Okay. And it is also whether you will get the starting rate at 0% on whether you will get the savings income nil rate band and how much will depend on what non-savings non-savings okay so now to make things easier for you whatever the procedure we have went through step one step two step three starting rate nil rate by normal rate looks complicated but if you use a column or layout of the income tax computation in the next slide is very easy which rates to apply you just need to divide it into different types of income so this is what you have to follow in your exam as well write the heading income tax computation why because when you finish your syllabus in your exam when you're writing an answer there are so many types of uh, tax that will be asked from you inheritance tax capital gain tax corporation tax VAT, income tax in order not to get confused, you have to write it properly that it's an income tax computation and the year 2022-23. This is the layout. First column, non-saving. Second column, saving. Third column, dividend and keep a total column. Okay. You have to follow a column or layout. This layout only. There's no other way. Otherwise, things get complicated. You might apply long, wrong rates. Then, trading income. Trading income falls under which category? Non-saving. And then immediately write it in the total, update in the total. When you are doing this question in your Excel, make sure the moment you write something in a category, update in the total as soon as you can. Next, employment income. Again, it's a non-saving. Always non-savings income write first. Again in the total. Then pension, it's a non-saving total. Then property, non-saving total. And by the way, property income is my next lecture, topic for my next lecture also. My lecture 5 is going to be on property income. Okay. Then savings income in savings. Don't write under non-savings and immediately total. Then we have dividend falling in dividend and total. So then we have total income from non-savings, savings, dividend and total. When For the total column, when you are adding the total income horizontally, and vertically the total column should be same then any type of reliefs we have gone through this layout by the way in lecture 3 please go and revise it back any and what are the reliefs and how much has been explained in lecture 3 so we are not wasting our time to explain it here again because focus is on savings and dividend we have finished in fact everything there release personal allowance net income how do you adjust net income how do you reduce personal allowance everything marriage allowance everything so reliefs you deduct from total income after that you have net income from net income you deduct personal allowance which is 12,570 under some conditions it is reduced also which has been explained in lecture 3 so you reduce then we have taxable income and on this apply the tax and you will get your income tax at different rates so now we'll be doing some questions calculation question on this so there are four questions which we are going to attempt now and this question i am going to solve it in your cv platform all you need to do is go to your acca practice platform and under taxation open a blank workspace 
copy paste your questions in this sheet in the space given to you so whenever you can see from here it's a blank constructed response taxation when you open this you will get a page like this where they'll be saying this is scenario the reason this is kept blank this is not a question the reason is if you have to do any questions which is given in your revision kit or from other sources you can straight away copy paste the questions on your word and on the next page on the excel you can do the calculation this saves a lot of time rather than you doing each question manually the reason is because if you put this four questions together you will see the questions are similar only when the numbers are changed tax rate change and how you need to calculate in different situations for example in some you will you might be able to utilize savings nil rate bait in some you might not in some you might get the starting rate of savings in some you might not that's the reason so this question includes both non savings and savings okay first it's only dealing with savings and then with including non savings as well dividend is not included at the moment dividend will be included after we finish the dividend portion that is the next portion so let's do there are four questions illustration 1 illustration 2 test understanding 1 illustration 3 this i will be doing using the same excel all the thing is first time when you set up the pro forma you just need to change the figure this is very easy it saves time okay remember in acca you need time efficient as well and even while you are studying always try to find ways creative ideas on how to save time and study more okay with less time you should be able to do more questions so now as you can see here illustration 1 savings income rate of tax illustration 2 also is the same just the number is changed and when you take to test understanding 1 you have been given pay as well and illustration 3 some relief and personal allowance so here three types of income is given a b and c you can see from here you need to calculate income tax liability assuming she has an employment income of a such b such and c such she also has bank interest jane received bank interest of 3000 so bank interest is savings the other employment are non savings okay illustration 2 is also same she has some bank interest of some amount name is changed but question is same income tax liability assuming these are trading income even trading income are non savings test your understanding one if you go same she have received some bank interest and they have given the employment income employment income is also non saving with the pay also this time so that's why see the question the question does not tell you to calculate income tax liability it says income tax payable okay and illustration 3 is a small question where you have been given employment income of so much you have received a savings income of so much see they didn't say non saving or saving income in the exam they will not tell you they will just write the income name of the income you have to decide they have here they wrote employment income you immediately should know where to place it non savings building society interest savings and qualifying interest of 100 this qualifying interest portion i have covered in section i mean lecture 3 you need to go back qualifying there are some interest on loan which are qualifying to reduce from your total income what are those conditions please go back to lecture 3 now you have pay also so this is like a full fleshed question the illustration 3 savings is there non saving is there qualifying reliefs are there pay is there calculate income tax payable okay and it's just one question not abc so just see how they are taking you to that level they immediately did not start with it illustration 3 is le- has more things to do than the other three questions so they are slowly taking you till there okay that's why start in this order it's good okay start in the order of the questions given to you in the books also now it's your choice you might do all the questions or you might do one two questions and get an idea it's fine it's up to you but the more you practice the better it is the more confident you become you know you have touched all the areas you know that if this comes this is how i have to tackle if that comes that is how i have to tackle but you have not touched all the area okay assuming that you know everything it's a very dangerous position to be at so now all you need to do is go to the next slide you can always come back okay go back and come forward okay here you have this previous button to see the question if you want and go to the next and here also is the same 
just you need to drag this here so that you make this bigger as you can see excel so excel this is the place where you have to do your workings so let's start with illustration one remember the first time you set the pro forma it has set all the other questions you just change the number okay so as i told you what do you have to do divide it into four columns non-saving saving dividend and total since we don't have dividend only three columns non-saving saving and total one is for the description where you'll be writing all the types of income but before that also you have to write income tax computation so here drag i'm going to drag this cell because it does not look nice also right if it comes in uh, different different i mean okay i will write and show you see income tax this is what i'm supposed to write income tax because in you will be using the same excel to do many questions you might be calculating back somewhere inheritance so it becomes very difficult if you just put number that's why clearly labeled that is income tax computation what is the year 2022 23 see like this also i can keep it but i feel it's better to keep it in one cell so i will drag it and make it big so that it comes in one cell you can't merge here this is not your normal excel that you use in your computer in the cb platform the excel given to you you cannot merge here okay so it's better to drag it it's up, up to you but i normally like to keep my table neat and tidy and i want to present it very well so and i'm going to make this bold so that the heading stands out okay you can even make this also pick if you want something yeah you can even increase the font size here if it's too small for you go here this is 14 okay okay Increase the font size up to you. Now, this first column A, I will keep for the column A. I will keep for the description. B, I'm going to put non non savings. Income. Okay, this also uh, doesn't look so good. So I'm going to. Wait just a minute. Can I fold? Okay, I'm going to drag it so that it comes in one cell. Okay, just you can undo also. Just see, it looks very confusing because in B also it falls, in C also it is shown. So rather drag it like this and make it in one column. It looks better also, neat, and it's easier for you also. Okay, try to keep it very simple and easy for you also to read. Okay. now it is savings i know due to time pressure and you are in a speed all this becomes difficult that's why practice is needed this is the reason the more you practice the faster you become and also keeping your numbers correct you are more accurate also savings no dividend so total if dividend is there third column will be dividend okay total so it's up to you now you can do any like you can center it you can make it bold better to keep it bold and pounds remember you don't have the default currency as pounds it is dollar so when you have to and it's important that you insert the currency when you have to insert the currency all you need to do is go to symbol here and click pounds done sorry pounds insert there is not okay i have not clicked any okay you need to double click here okay so symbol pounds insert there is no text field to insert the character for please give a text field the focus Format cells. Okay, if you are not able to insert it because they say it's not text or something, let me change the format. text is not here i'll try one more time this is it's always good to test all this before uh, in the actual exam right while practicing also it's good that i've taken you here so all you can do is go back maybe you can put it in your word or maybe from here also itself you can take but we'll see whether this works or not insert pound okay maybe because it's blank or something but in the main table you are usually i mean in your main exam 
or and also while you are practicing any past paper usually it comes the pound sign comes but anyway since this is blank maybe they are not putting that pounds but you can take it from here okay this is why you need to be a little smart also okay because i know at this stage students struggle and they panic this is what you should avoid in acc you should not panic at any stage there is always a way out somewhere try to get this shortcut okay this is what exact this is exactly what i used to do even in my exam if i'm not able to get something the right way i try to twist and indirectly get it in another way but i never panic okay i don't so now paste there is some issue here we'll try once more copy I have no idea why it's not coming, but usually it comes. Maybe I'm assuming this is a blank workspace, but we'll try once more. Otherwise, we'll just leave it. But you have to keep the pound sign there, okay? Below that, we'll put dollar. Okay, there's no text fill. That's what they are repeating, right? So we'll keep this blank. But in your exam, even while you're practicing, don't wait till the day of the exam. put the pound sign it will come okay because we are doing this through a blank workspace that's why it's not coming anyway so first is employment income this is what you have to label your income okay next is bank interest these are the two types of income then we have total income from total income we deduct less pa you can write for pa for personal allowance is allowable okay right and if you are reducing if your personal allowance is reduced in some instance make sure that you write a note like this here note okay and write, put a label put if there are so many notes put number note 1 note 2 note 3 like that okay and after you deduct personal allowance you have taxable income because you don't have any reliefs directly you can deduct personal allowance otherwise first you deduct pers relief and then personal allowance so, okay taxable income so first you have to reach till this age this stage employment income non savings how much 11000 savings is 3000 so i am going to put in the savings column and when i put here apply the function is very easy because the moment you change the number automatically total will change if you try to do this manually for example i am inserting this 11000 manually that is also fine i can do that but when you change this number you again have to go to the total and keep changing every time which is time consuming that's why use functions in excel that's why excel is used for right otherwise manually also this could be done so what i'm going to do is put the sum function equal to sum bracket always you need to put the equal sign otherwise it will not perform the function for you for total as the sum function you need to put the bracket then you need to drag even though this is empty still do it because later on if you add if anything is there automatically next time you change the number the total will be updated excel will take it also so this time so this is how i'm going to take wait like this you have to drag it so that this colon comes like this right the two dots if you want to add individually and that also i will show you okay you put a comma and then let's say this number you want to add because it's not possible if you want to add separately different different numbers in different different cells you can put a comma and click on that cell it will add but if you want to add everything in a row you can just drag it then the semicolon comes not the comma like this if you have two three numbers like this you can just drag like this like this you can keep dragging wait like this you can keep dragging right but if numbers are in different arrangements not in the same row you can put comma and do that
so enter even if you don't close the bracket and put enter it will come now for the next column next row i don't have to do anything i'm just going to drag it. i'm just going to this plus sign has to come see always when you go like this this plus sign go to this end point you can see here on the right side down not this one this plus sign should come then drag it sorry uh, undo drag it like this automatically it will calculate okay if you want to see just click on this cell and the formula you can see here you can see what are the cells they have taken it will automatically take it like this this is the beauty of excel and this is why it saves time if you want to do this manually every time adding it takes time and another way some of you might use calculator which is given here that's good it's fine you can use it but it's a time consuming see each time you have to calculate you have to add 11 0 0 0 then add how long is it taking for you to input all this number one by one in the calculator right that's why because excel automatically calculates it for you so you don't have to waste time here for very small calculation like let's say x divided by y something divided by something or something addition with something small calculation you can always use calculator big calculation like this tables are used excel is better now total income so for total income again i need some function because it has been adding horizontally now you need to add downwards vertically put a bracket put like this sorry it should take from this cell like this enter and automatically with this plus sign i'm going to take it like this you see automatically it is adjusted now personal allowance if you see personal allowance now what is the personal allowance this you should know it's 12 and if you don't know here you have help tax table open this go to the tax table immediately and you can see all the rates are given see basic rate higher rate additional rate rates are given and personal allowance so personal allowance is 12 okay 12 in case you forgot go to that table and you can use it if you remember it's good so 12 570 but if you see total income is only 11,000 is less than personal allowance so the personal allowance First, you have to deduct from non cfx and only up to 11,000 you can deduct. You cannot deduct 12,570 from 11,000. Then taxable income becomes negative. Taxable income cannot be negative, it is zero only. So, up to 11,000 you can reduce personal allowance. So, just put bracket. Because it's a negative number, I'm going to use bracket 11,000. The moment you put bracket, put enter, automatically it shows minus sign. Why minus sign? Go to format cell and see number you see this is the style you can change the style if you want to show it as a bracket the negative figure that also you can change from here but the default position on your cv platform in excel is this only that they have done later if you want to change you can change on your own but changing uh, it's a time consuming so let it be like this because it's easy so it is minus the reason i'm telling you this is because when you go to deduct then you have to use a sum function if you want to go to taxable income you have to use sum function why if you put minus what happens this is a minus figure so 11000 minus minus 11000 minus minus becomes plus you want to see here see technically you have to deduct only personal allowance from total income so here this minus this see what happens it is added because number in that cell personal allowance it's minus 11,000 if it was plus 11,000 you would then if you deduct it makes sense so here because it is in minus you have to use some function equal to some function if you do this even if it's some it will deduct only see it is zero now because this is minus if it was in bracket okay but even if it's bracket also if you put minus 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 becomes plus only so it's not about bracket or anything this number is minus if you want you can keep this plus and say here because anyway you are saying here less personal allowance right so you can keep this as positive 11,000 showing you are deducting then if you put minus for example let me change this okay 11,000 right now I don't have to use some function 
because already I'm writing here less personal allowance. That means this 11,000 is deducted. So here I'm going to put equal this minus this. Now you see, because it's positive, normally you can use this. But since it is minus some function, okay? So we'll go the other way around. This. Here, from 12, 570, 11,000 went, okay? This also you can use a calculator maybe for this or maybe you can use somewhere in Excel you can do, okay? We'll use calculator because you have to know, to, know how to use calculator as well. So 12,000, I'm sorry, 12,570 minus 11, enter, 1,570. Balance 1570 you will deduct from your savings income. Okay. So how much minus 1570 enter. Okay. And here just you don't have to do anything, just drag this here. I'm sorry, you cannot drag it. It's taking the sum function. See, it's wrong. You have to take this. This to you have to add. So you have to use sum function. Enter. See, 12,570. Total way has to come 12,570. Here, if you take this, To the other cell if you just drag it to the other cell it will take because already i have performed the function here this minus this so automatically this also they will minus the personal allowance from 3000 and same from total also so total is just 1 for 30 very less right now income tax this is for part a okay by the way part a income tax so now we are calculating See, 1430, no non savings, zero. So, this 1430, tell me what rate? It falls in the first 5000, right? So, 1430 at 0%. That means no tax. But you have to show, you just cannot say it is at zero, so I, I just write zero. Some of you might write zero also like this. No, you have to show the working. Even if it's zero percent, you have to show that zero percent. For example, you have to write like this savings, income, Wait, it's from this side. Savings income. See, you are writing. If you are using any special rate, starting rate or nil rate ban, you have to make sure that you mention that you are using starting rate here. Nil rate ban, you don't have to touch because through starting rate only everything went off. So starting rate. Now make sure that you write a note next to it. Why did we mention note next to personal allowance to say that? This is less, so 11 and 1570 from savings that you are going to write under note. I'm not writing it for you. You can do it on your own. Later on down, you can write somewhere like here, note one, personal allowance like this. Then note two, uh, starting rate of savings like that. You can label it that I don't have to write for you. You can do it on your own. Okay, so note two here. First, write your income. Okay, what is your income in one column? 1, 4, 30. Or you can just copy paste here. Copy, paste. What happened? When I pasted, it is showing 0. Why? There was a formula. Whenever a formula is done to a cell, you just cannot copy paste like this. There is a special rule. Again, I will copy. Copy, go to paste special, not paste. What do you want? You need it with the formula or just the value or with format and all. So I will just take the value. If you take it with the formula, the moment someone clicks here, they can see it from where you have taken that starting rate. It comes with the formula, which is good in a way. So I will take with the formula. Okay. So the moment I click here, see. But wait a minute. Let's say I have copy pasted this copy. 
paste special i have just taken the value okay okay now just see the moment i click here i just see this number i cannot see the form function done to this because i've just taken the value but if you ask me it is not wrong anything you can take if you ask me it is better to take with the function so that later on if you make some mistake first for example if you change something here here also automatically it will change rather than you going manually and changing everywhere so it is better to copy with the function not only in taxation in any subject even in afm it's very valuable advice okay take this advice these are very valuable tips which no one will tell you okay and no one told me as well i i learned it through experience right bad experience i used to make mistakes a lot of mistakes and then i learned until i became perfect so click here okay now what's next apply the percentage here what is it into a oh, sorry x or oh, you can just put x what is it 0% just keep it like this you can show that you have been multiplying it with 0% now wait i'll keep it here or you can just change it like this or oh, better to keep it in center because if i keep here it is very near i mean just keep some space it it looks better right now it looks better now what am i going to do tell me see what happens if i uh, try to do multiply this with this enter it will not perform why the moment i put x the moment i've done zero percentage it becomes a text it is no longer a number if i put just zero here just zero there it will take but if you just put zero it's not very clear so it's better to show that you're multiplying it with zero percent okay now let me show you change this to just a zero now when you go here multiply this see so if you want to show that you are multiplying just put x because x is the same for 0% and what you can do is either use the calculator separately if you want to do or just put 0 because as far as it's 0 even if you are not performing any function it's fine because it is understood when you are applying 0% to this rate it is 0% but it's always good to show a formula to show that you have multiplied this with this and got 0 it's good to show ok oh that is a way you can do this put 0 and put a percentage you see what did I do this is a better way put a zero here go here and put percentage automatically it puts percentage now click here so put equal to this multiply by this enter this is enough the moment someone sees here they can see that you have multiplied this with this you don't have to put that x that you have multiplied 143 into zero percent someone clicks this cell they can see it so this is also fine this is perfect okay so the answer is this you can make your answer stand out for example bold like this or you can fill this cell with a color see go here and any color let's say orange you see but make sure when you're selecting a color color should be such a way it is uh, you can see with your eyes i mean it's not so difficult for examiner or you to read the answer this looks a little difficult i will change the color maybe i'll keep some bright color now it's a little easier right so for example don't choose black and all right i mean come on or it should not i mean color should be something which is not very difficult you can do it it's a choice it's not compulsory you have to do this way only but make sure that your number answer stands out because the requirement tells you calculate income tax liability from where will they get this because there are so many numbers there is this this how will they get income tax liability if you don't show your answer stand out like this so there should be something some way make it bold or color or highlight or do something for everything keep this consistency for all your answers main requirement okay and remember it is not just for your final answer you are getting marks for each and everything for putting this employment income in the correct non-saving you will get a mark for putting bank interest under saving a mark 
for calculating personal allowance and showing it in note another mark for calculating the correct tax rate another mark and finally for the answer one mark so if you get wrong in this steps final answer will be wrong but still you will get some marks but if you don't show this workings and just try to skip it and just show the video calculator just say you add ding 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 you add and then you just calculate you might get the correct answer zero yes but you will miss all this marks that you will get by showing all this in the excel if you just straight away use calculator and do it some of you are very quick in uh, calculations i know that you will do it in one stretch one go only you will calculate in calculate and get the income tax liability avoid it avoid it i know this takes a little time putting in the excel and doing it rather you could mentally do it faster but avoid it because marks is for this workings majority of the marks are in fact for the workings only in fact only one or two marks is for your final answer so sometimes even if your final answer is wrong you will still get good marks because of your workings maybe everything is done correct last stage maybe somewhere something went wrong one or two marks so don't put your pos uh, self in a position by not showing the workings because students often don't do that they always try to focus on the main answer and get it right some way by ignoring the steps for example there are four steps to get to your right answer students often ignore the first four steps and immediately write step 5 still you will get one or two marks but what about the workings what about the marks in step 1 2 3 4 don't do it so now under notes you can do it for personal allowance you can write first it is deducted from non savings and then savings and for starting rate you are using a note 2 here okay you can say that uh, because it falls in the first 5000 it is taxed at 0% okay and in your exam even if it is 0% you have to show the 0% okay don't just write zero don't just come to same as income and write zero assuming examiner will understand that no examiner will not know it okay so now coming to b okay so a is done b same table you can use but you just have to change the number see how efficient and time saving it is It's quicker right so i'm just going to change this to b see in your exam you can't do this in your exam separately you have to do a b c you have to separately show like this but because you are practicing you can change in the same table only while practicing only you can use it because in the exam they need all the answers no for a b and c you can't keep changing like that this is while practicing i always have to say this word of caution because students often you know whatever i teach they immediately go and apply it in the exam so there are some things which needs to be done only while practicing not in the main exam so coming to b okay you just now need to change the figure in case you forgot don't worry you don't have to memorize it always go to the previous and check so 11000 is done now with 15200 keeping everything same we'll see how the situation changes how the tax rate changes and income tax liability okay so let's do that so now we are going to put 15200 in the non savings keeping everything same 15200 and see okay now if you have seen everything automatically changes right but there is a there is a mistake somewhere that took place what where is it it's in the personal allowance this you need to adjust okay so personal allowance now if you see you can exactly deduct 12570 without deducting anything from your savings income so we'll do that 12570 and here there will be no personal allowance to deduct Okay, so now you can see the total taxable income is five six thirty. If you see, it is little more than five thousand, and out of that five thousand, two six thirty is non savings for which you will not get zero percent. But the starting rate of savings you will get for some portion out of the five thousand. 
so now we'll do the calculation this time we have non savings as well so here non saving basic rate okay so here when you are putting it you have to change this you have to take this copy paste special with the formula okay now just change the percentage what is the basic rate percentage for non saving 20 okay immediately this answer will be updated because you have already done the function before now you need for 5000 okay just write 5000 here so if you want to get the balance it is 5000 minus this amount take so out of the 3000 of savings 2370 will be taxed at 0% that is the starting rate okay savings starting rate whenever you are using nil rate band or starting rate make sure you write a note this time for personal allowance there is no note that is needed earlier we did because we partially first reduced from non savings then savings since in part b entirely from non savings no note but here you still have to make a note okay note one so you can write for starting note one and then you can write that 23770 falls in the 5000 category here you have to take zero okay when you take zero make sure that you convert it into percentage okay 0 why am i not able to okay go here format cells make it a number okay okay now zero and apply percentage go to the percent and make sure okay see the reason why it is not coming as 0% is when it's not coming always go to format cells go to percent and make it this okay so that it applies like this percent okay now just drag this here automatically it will take okay this into this so it is zero now out of 3000 only 2370 is taxed at zero there are balance that is left that means out of this 5000 is only used 630 the remaining 630 will be taxed at what rate what rate 20% no nil rate ban see he is a basic rate tax payer right less than 37700 so he is a basic rate tax payer basic rate gets 1000 of savings nil rate ban so that means even the 630 will be taxed at zero so here we are going to write it okay when you write here don't write 630 what are you going to do is put an equal sign here take this minus 5000 the balance right this you are going to take 0% Okay, you can just copy here, paste special with the formula. Okay, okay. Uh, when you paste special, you have to click it again. Okay, now see. Okay, so when you copy, paste special. Okay. There is so many. Okay, just will take the value. Okay. When you have pasted it, it comes. Now, all you need to do is just drag it down. Okay. So, how many total tax are you paying? What is the income tax liability? It is just the sum. Sorry. 
it is just the sum of this on your tax even if it's just 526 rather than just writing 526 make sure that you always perform a function a function needs to be performed okay so because when the moment examiner clicks here they'll be able to see what other things you have added from here they can see it that's how you get the marks okay you can just write 526 like this also you can type but it's always good to show formulas so this you will label it as income tax liability i forgot to wait for the first one but you have to label it like this income tax liability maybe like this you can make it bold this 526 or as i told you can color the cell anyway whatever the way but remember if you're deciding on coloring make sure that for every answer you do that your answer has to be consistent the way you present if you want to make it bold then for every answer do it bold you should not be you are coloring one cell making it bold and leaving unbold no don't there should be consistency in how you present your answers now here also you have to make a note okay this one here it is savings is using sorry the next one here savings is using nil rate band here also he has to make a note note too why because he's a basic taxpayer he is entitled to 1000 of same is nil red band even if it's not 1000 but that's 630 falls in 1000 right so you might you can say that the balance 1000 minus 630 the balance of nil rate band is lost okay now we'll quickly change it to part c what is the employment for part c 29000 so when is 29000 no per problem with personal allowance you can take it as it is everything is automatically changed and this is the answer okay and if you see here this you can straight away take like this because it's non-savings and apply 20 percent no issue with it okay and if you see this time you will not get the starting rate why because if you see this it's more than 5000 so the entire 5000 falls in non-saving so nil rate ban is sorry starting rate is not applicable this time right what about the starting what about the nil rate ban he is still applicable to nil rate ban because he is a basic rate taxpayer less than 37 700 how much thousand so out of this two thousand three thousand one thousand will be taxed at zero percent remaining two thousand at twenty percent you understanding so this time it will be one thousand Sorry, it's not yet this. It is this multiply by this. And this time it will be the balance. 3000 minus 1000 is 2000, which will be taxed at 20%. Okay. So the moment you do that, immediately you get here. And this is. It should be 19,430, okay? That the total income. That total income we put here just to see the whether we are taking all the incomes and taxing it appropriately or not, just to check the balance. But our main focus is on the right set, okay? This one. So the total is 3686. Now we are moving on to illustration two. So illustration one is over. Okay, let's go back illustration 2 also bank interest and this time if you see in abc in all the three with all the three incomes he was a basic rate taxpayer now if you see this range 43 53 he's moving into a higher rate okay he's into higher rate now and test your understanding one if you see it's even more okay i mean it's it has pay that is the only difference and if you see this one it has all the things non in savings non savings qualifying interest together so this might be 
145. And if you add this 145 with 7, it falls into additional direct taxpayer. So when you're doing questions in taxation, you should make sure you do it from all the angles. Basic rate taxpayer, higher rate, additional rate. You should know the impact to your nil rate band and starting rate in all the three levels. That's why I'm doing all these questions. Otherwise, I would have skipped very easily and I have told you to do the questions. But I know that many of you will not do it. Thinking it's the same. If I'm able to do one, I will be able to do 10 other questions. It's not like that. Even though it's there, but the figures are different. I mean, the figures are different. The way you do some calculations, for example, where to use the starting rate, how to do it differs. So 43, 53, 145. Let's do that. And interest changes. So same table, we can use it. Okay. Now. So 43,000 is your non-savings. This is illustration two. This time savings will fall to 78550. Okay. Because it is 43, immediately you can reduce your personal allowance. Everything is automatically adjusted. 38, 280. And this you can just take 20% and apply because it falls in the basic rate. Starting rate you will not get because 5000, entire 5000 is under in, inside the non-savings. What about the nil rate ban? You can get because it's a basic rate taxpayer. Is he? Is he? No. He's a higher rate. He's not a basic rate. 37,700 is the limit this is why you need to know the range even though this figure looks very small very easily you might think is a basic rate this mistakes often students do when they are very close by very close to 37 700 3800 38000 37000 they tend to make this mistake often they make this mistakes that's why i've purposely i've told that it's a basic rate to see whether you have understood or not it is not a basic rate look at very closely more than 37 700 is a higher rate so higher rate means your nil rate ban will fall to 500 from 1000. This is no problem. Saving 20 take. But when you come here, it should be 500 into 0%. Make a note here. Okay. This is not starting rate. This is nil rate ban. NRB. Or you can write SNRB. Savings nil rate ban. Okay. And this time. If you see it is slightly more than 37,700. So first 37,700 should be taxed at 20%. Some of it will be taxed at 40%. Okay. So you want to know the balance, right? So just write 37,700. And you want to know the balance that will be taxed at 20%. So right here, put this minus this plus or oh, okay, minus. You're not putting a bracket. When you're not putting a bracket, you can do minus 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 you will get but if you are putting a bracket here if you are putting a bracket here remember this should not be minus then you have to add still you will get the same answer you should know both this is why i'm taking you through each and every single scenario that one can think of where students make mistakes students often don't make mistakes in the big things they make mistakes in the small small things they forget to put one bracket they forget they change the sign because when you put the bracket sign changes when you don't put the bracket sign changes operation differs so test yourself by using both with brackets and without brackets you should know both how it works on the day of the exam you don't have time to experiment yourself i'm telling you this before the day of the exam you should have done all the mistakes possible because it's practice you can make mistake 100 times also don't feel bad or don't stop yourself from making mistakes and try to be perfect no one can be perfect no one has ever been perfect the one who is scoring high marks they have themselves are telling that they have made 100 of mistakes while practicing that's why they are perfect when it comes to exam they've gone through all the silly mistakes anyways and it should be 6 7 7 30 Okay, don't take calculator or use your own personal calculator and try to add up and see whether it is this. It will waste your time. You have to trust the Excel. Okay, Excel cannot make mistakes unless you inc put incorrect data or do some incorrect operation using some uh, right 
rather than putting plus you're putting minus using brackets in wrong places if you do that yes then excel will give you wrong answers otherwise if you do everything correctly excel is going to be 100 percent accurate but you might get a uh, error while calculating so don't do that it's a waste of time have that trust on excel okay now so this will be taxed at 20 percent automatically it's done now what's next 37700 right so here i'm going to put this here copy paste what happened it didn't copy paste right it will not because i told you you need to when you have a form a function paste special formula okay now you want to know the balance that will be taxed at 40 percent right so take this and minus this and here it's 40 percent okay 40 percent because higher rate is 40 percent this is not calculated correctly because earlier i used some function here all these things you have to make sure when you are this copy pasting it 232 and here some function this should not be zero this should be zero in fact not zero percent This multiply by it. This end. You know why you are getting a zero percent here? If you see here, when you put twenty percent, you are getting zero point two here. But here, you are just getting a zero. They are they are taking it as a text other they should take it as a percentage okay don't put the this sign okay just multiplied with zero just go to your form itself you should know all this when things go wrong and always be prepared that in your exam there are some things no matter how much you have planned and you have practiced a question 100 times on the day of the exam some mistakes like this you will make mentally be prepared for it and then go and you need time to solve this also so on one hand you have to do questions on the other hand you have to solve some silly mistakes that you will incur maybe something will not work okay don't panic and don't stress under that condition so now and you need to know how to change certain thing for example here now it's coming percentage because it's coming in percentage it will not because all these are in number this cannot be left in percentage you should know how to remove this into from percentage to number so form itself take it as number and this uh, okay just apply okay okay so what did i do form itself go to number and just click okay now let us perform the sum function just drag and enter see so all these things no one is going to tell you no you will ever come to know that's why it's very important that you discover this by yourself while you are practicing on CB platform, not only for taxation, even for other subjects, but mostly for taxation and AFM, you are going to face this issue because they, you need Excel heavily for the subjects. You have to calculate numbers and all in financial management, in advanced financial management, you need to calculate net present value, valuation of companies, balance sheet you have to do, even in SRB even in your financial reporting chances are you can make mistakes especially in the format okay 
something needs to be shown in percentage are you showing it in percentage something has to be shown in decimal in two decimal places all these things you have to take care of number you might get correct but the presentation that takes time and that comes with practice so now let's go to part b 53000 so this will simply change to 53000 everything automatically changes is a higher rate okay this no problem 20 percent non savings starting rate not applicable because 5000 falls here what about the basic uh, nail rate 500 because he's a higher rate so 500 this one now the first 37 700 automatically they take the balance no this does not take the balance because this number was different okay if you see here this okay there is a mistake here that i've done as well as you didn't discover that is they cannot start with 40 430 they have to start with first 37 700 at 20 percent now you do see so this has to be changed to 37 700 yes out of this 37 700 then are you going to charge the remaining at 20 percent or you are going to take the savings 500 no you first have to finish the non-savings income slag that slag needs to be finished first before you move on to savings okay it doesn't matter you still will get the 500 nil rate band of savings when you touch the savings income first finish don't immediately jump to 500 nil rate band at zero percent first finish the non-saving so here it should be 40 430 because i want to know the balance okay when i want to know the balance of this it will be this minus this and 2730 this will be taxed at 40 percent you see it's very easy automatically answers are changing now now you will get 500 here because 40 430 of non-saving is done 500 at zero this is savings nil rate band snrb you can use short form and make a note of it and out of this 500 is taxed at zero what about the remaining 40 percent it will be taxed because already 37 700 goes in non savings only so balance will fall in the higher rate only you understanding so this one will be this minus sorry i'm sorry you can always undo minus 500 7350 this will be taxed at 40 percent okay there is something wrong this should not be calculated because this is just the total okay so the total is 11572 and now see 145,000. So this will change to 145. When it's 145,000, think, can we you first go to personal allowance? Can we deduct 12,570? Look your taxable income. I'm sorry, not your taxable income, it's your total income personal allowance to look at your total income there has been no donation no charity nothing otherwise you have to change this total income also adjust it and then decide this part i've explained in my lecture three if you have missed it go back but since there is nothing like that easily just look at the total income total income is more than 125 140 when it's more than 125 140 personal allowance is zero nil how it is done lecture three so this will be now zero no personal allowance for a additional rate taxpayer is an additional rate more than 150000 okay so now it's this now when we tax 37700 first slice is gone out of 145 what about the balance this will be 145 only
no it's 150 i'm sorry because additional higher rate is 150 okay higher rate has to be 150 but remember it's 145 so out of 145 if 37 700 what is the balance you can find it out this you can do in one stretch also like this this sorry equal to this minus 37 700 107 300 will be taxed at 40 percent higher rate now looking at this taxable income will he get uh, nil rate ban no nil rate ban is only for basic and higher he's an additional rate taxpayer more than 150000 so zero so nil rate no nil rate ban no starting rate also so this 7850 will be taxed entirely at 40% is it no Partly at 40, the other at 45% because he's an additional rate taxpayer. Okay. Now, how much? So if you see out of 150, 145, so remaining 5,000 of savings comes in the higher rate, right? So here it is 5,000. Here it will be 150,000. This will be taxed at 40%. Or you can just simply, if you don't want to multiply, just drag this down. Now, out of this 5000 will be taxed at 40, 2850 will be taxed at 45%. The balance. The balance is often the difficult part. Students often struggle there to get the balance part. If you take it at 45, you will get something in decimal, 1 to 82. But try to keep it as a whole number. Because in taxation, it is told, okay, even in your exam instruction, it says, keep everything as a whole number. How do you do this? How do you change this 1 to 82.5 into a whole number? Go, click here. Go here. You can click here. Uh, wait. Go here, format cell, number, uh, sorry, you need to go to decimal places. Okay, so you need to go here, click this point zero zero. you can see here, right? Click here. You can go to wait. It's been a long time that I've not done any question on CB platform. That's why even I'm also finding like you. Okay, done. So you need to click here, go to format cell, and under all, you will see the zero, right? Click the zero. Okay, it will take it. The moment you click zero, it will take it to round number, whole number. Okay, avoid decimals. So here, same thing you need to do here. Okay, so when you do the sum function, let's do the sum function again and see. If you are getting a sum function, you see you are getting a point here. Even though you are showing this, but if you see here, the function is like this, right? So it is 0.5 only. Even though it's not showing here because we have formatted the cell, but when we calculate the sum, it is going to take the original number only, not this 1 to 83. You understanding? So this also separately you have to format it. 
how you can do that same format cell click this okay see now right that's very easy now test understanding one so in your test your understanding one employment is 25000 for a savings is 3350 i'm going to go a little bit faster right now and immediately you can deduct your whole personal allowance from here minus 12570 and everything changes this is a basic rate so here when he takes he can just take 12430 i'm not copy pasting okay in order to save time take this at 20 percent and starting rate not he will not get because more than 5000 here but the nil rate band yes he will get 1000 because basic rate so here 1000 you need to change this percentage into zero so if you take 1000 from here it is 2350 2350 at 20% So just deduct this and deduct this automatically you are getting a total here what is the total this one okay this and this you add to nine fifty six but test understanding one if you see let's go back See, test your understanding one from A, okay, with 25,000. So every time they will change this and they will change the pay. They ask income tax payable, not liability. You have to deduct your pay as well. So this time, from this, we'll deduct our pay. What was the pay in the first one? Minus 2630. This is pay as you earn. And just do the sum function because it's already minus so when you do the sum function they will deduct 326 this is your income tax payable so you need to write income tax payable now with b 47500 only your non savings changes savings remain same personal allowance entirely you can reduce and now you are a higher rate so with higher rate first this one you will take 20% 34 930 into 20% out of this still okay so since you have utilized this entirely then the next 500 of savings because he's a higher rate so 500 nil rate ban only he will get now you have you you need to be a little quicker right now okay you can't be slow 500 into 0 now this is gone this is gone if you see some portion of it comes in the basic rate so you need to know that basic rate 37700 it is this minus this minus this so from your savings out of this 500 goes and 2270 will be taxed at 20 percent the balance the balance will be taxed at 40 percent how do you get the balance take this amount deduct 500 deduct this amount this will be taxed at 40 percent so just drag this cell down okay automatically it's done so what is your income tax liability 7672 and your payability this time is 6530 and you will be getting 1142 okay now go, going to situation c 16100 so here also everything is same 68080 okay and if you see this 
he will get nil rate band also starting rate band also so 350 so here 3530 will be taxed at 20 percent because non saving and you want to know 5000 okay out of 5000 how much savings will be taxed at zero percent the starting rate so 5000 minus this amount 1470 at zero percent this is the starting rate now comes the nil rate band how much will be the nil rate band thousand because he's a basic rate taxpayer okay so here it will be thousand zero percent okay now so if you see here 1470 goes thousand goes what remains it's easy just take this deduct sorry undo go to this cell take this and deduct this minus thousand balance is 880 this will be taxed at 20 percent and 182 Sorry, this will not be taxed. It is 882. It's very small, right? And pay is 850. So you will be getting income tax payable of only 32, small amount. Now, illustration three, the last question is left. So it's a small amount everything is there okay we'll see so non savings is 13 085 savings is 7500 only this two and remember from your total income this time not personal allowance first you have to deduct qualifying interest of 100 from what even the reliefs has to be deducted first from non saving then saving then dividend like how you deduct personal allowance so first you'll be deducting interest because it's for qualifying purpose which is 100 now you'll be deducting personal allowance less personal allowance entirely you can reduce it from your non savings 12 570 because function has not been done in this cell you went one cell one row down you need to again do this function here okay so now this will be total taxable income will be here now this becomes total income okay those changes you can make the anyway the last one will be taxable income only okay here some function so just do this enter just take it to the other side here also this needs to be there minus 12 it has to be from the total make sure when you're doing it make sure personal allowance or relief whenever you're taking under any column always check whether it's under total also or not okay 79150 very small amount so now if you see here okay very small i know take from here so if you see here this 415 can you tax it at zero percent no because it's non-savings even though you might say uh starting rate is there new rate ban of thousand is there no it is not saving so 415 will be taxed at 20 percent only okay 
okay this multiply by this end now what about savings out of this out of 5000 if you see he will get the starting rate because only 415 out of 5000 so here just keep total and equal to minus this amount and so 4585 could be taxed at 0% that is the savings starting rate okay just drag it to the drag it down now you will get 1000 nil rate band also because basic rate so 1000 zero percent now what's next from here you deduct this because you have taken as a starting rate then nil rate band also 1000 is taken what is the balance 19150 this will be taxed at 20 percent okay so if you take here what is the total some function take the total of this enter 466 and pay is just 47 so deduct pay income tax payable will be 490 so we are over with savings you have seen it from various angles how nil rate band and starting rate sometimes you get sometimes you don't get and under various conditions when you having non savings of more than 5000 not at all less than 5000 at all the three levels basic higher additional moving on to dividend income this is a easier okay rates of tax on dividend the special rule for dividend is first 2000 of dividend income is always taxed at zero percent that is known as dividend nil rate band how we have a nil rate band for savings we have for dividend but how it is different from saving in saving we have two nil rate band thousand for basic rate 500 for higher rate but unlike savings nil rate band for dividend does not depend on your income irrespective of your income you can be higher basic additional anything first 2000 of dividend income always taxed at zero percent okay that is the only rule rest everything is similar so dividend rate for the basic is 8.75 higher 33.75 additional 39.35 now how do you apply this first 2000 zero percent then the balance normal way okay so remember savings starting rate that is zero percent okay five thousand and all first five thousand they say it depends on taxable income unlike that dividend does not depend on anything always first two thousand of dividend zero percent then dividend income taxed at the dividend nil rate band reduces the available basic rate and high rate band when determining the rate of tax on remaining dividend income sometimes you might be having some dividend right the balance remaining so because you are having that nil rate band remember when you are taking the basic rate 37700 let's say you have 35000 of income of savings or non savings anything the balance 2000 when you are taking it it is taken with your savings or non savings to decide your basic rate band so that 2000 will go when you are utilizing your basic rate band that 2000 is taken there i will show you through calculations how it is taken so that means your basic rate band will go and also higher rate to decide that that 2000 is taken to decide how much of the remaining dividend will be taxed at and after that any remaining dividend taxed at the rates given on that table so now let's do some questions from dividend income as well 
we are going to do six questions here illustration four five six and test understanding two three four this time we need to add an additional column that is for dividend so we are going to have non savings savings and dividend so starting with illustration four earned income of 14850 dividend of 4500 pay 600 you need to calculate income tax payable if you see illustration four five test your understanding uh, four and five are income tax payable whereas test your understanding two illustration six are tax liability that means you don't deduct the payee and again test to understanding three and test to understanding four test to understanding three is payable and four is liability because we have payee that's why it's payable and when we don't have the payee it's a liability okay but the nature of all these questions are very similar in one table only we can just do this multiple times okay we are just going because we will be having the three columns in all the six questions we will be having unemployment income we'll be having same some savings income and some dividend income okay all the thing is we just need to change the number each time as we move from different questions so this saves a lot of time okay now starting with illustration four employment income dividend no no savings income tax payable and you have been given pay of 600 so let's quickly do that you can go to next I have already added the dividend column for you. So this saves time. So now you'll be having four columns, non-saving, saving, dividend, and total. Even though you don't have savings for this, but for the next questions, you'll be having saving. Okay. It's up to you. You you can just skip two. And wherever you have savings, you can have three. Okay. So for employ employment, employment income is under non-savings. 14. 850 now dividend no savings dividend is okay this is going to be dividend now 4500 the total when you are doing the total do the sum function just drag this enter and you can drag this like this you can always undo this plus sign has to come okay okay now what else you need to have the sum function here as well okay this you can drag like this now you need to deduct your personal allowance can you deduct entirely yes when you're deducting personal allowance always set first against non savings why it is tax efficient because dividend has 2000 nil rate non saving has none of the facility which savings and dividend has so here we are going to deduct personal allowance which is 12570 and since already the functions are done here that's why automatically the answer is updated when we were doing questions on savings you can recall that we have already done the function here okay so this is the taxable income you need to copy this here in the total column paste now just drag it okay which will be your taxable income so your taxable income is 6780 looking at it you can tell you are a basically a taxpayer but for and since we don't have savings okay it doesn't matter whether we are basic higher or additional now our focus is already on dividends okay so dividend the 2000 nil rate ban you will get no matter whatever your income is whether you are a basic whether you are higher whether you are additional 
okay so now we are going to calculate the income tax right so let's do that first non savings so we are going to put this here copy paste with the formula if you want you can do of the value so we are going to take 20% right 20% Just put here this into this end of 456. 2000 of dividend, dividend nil rate ban DNRB. Okay, so just put 2000 and 0%. 0%. You can just drag this down. And if 2000 goes from 4500, you are left with 2500. This is an easy calculation 2500 at basic rate. What is the basic rate of dividend? Not 20%. I know you will be very quick to take 20%, but remember, guys, this is dividend. This is not non savings and savings. Basic higher additional rate for dividend is different, it is 8.75%. So you can just drag this down. It will automatically take it. Okay. But in taxation and advanced taxation, your answer has to be to the nearest bounds. So convert this to the nearest bounds. Okay. You can use some function or you can manually looking at it. You can do it. 218.75 will be 219. Okay. So let's do this with function. If you want to do this, let's go here. general we'll go to the custom and this one okay okay now what's next use the sum function and add all this you need to deduct your pay Okay, your pay is what 600 so now again do the sum function deduct this way and your income tax liability or payable payable is 75 this is your income tax payable so now we'll do it for illustration 5 here also we have employment income and dividend only and payee so we'll quickly do that. You just have to change the figure. That's it. So this becomes 34,250. And then this becomes 17,500. See how everything automatically gets changes. Person I was deducted. And you are having 39,180. Now you are a higher rate because more than 37,700. Okay, so when you're taking non savings, this is at 20%, that's fine. Then this also at 2000, fine, only this changes. But remember, some portion of it will fall in basic and small portion of it will fall in higher for dividend. So you need to see that. Okay, to check that, okay, this is how you check. Basic rate is 37,700. Okay, so for this, you need to know equal to this minus this and deduct this. 1420. Up to 1420 of dividend, if you deduct 17,500 with 2000, it will be 15,500. Out of 15,500, 1420 will be taxed. Uh, Tax at basic, the balance at higher rate. Okay, so already it is taken at 8.75 and this is done. Now, what is the addition? If you want to know, 
just simply take this and deduct this 1480 right this will be taxed at what rate what is the higher rate for dividend 33.75 percent already this was formatted that this will be shown as percentage that's why percentage is automatically coming okay you just need to this will not be there you need to bring this down okay and when you bring this down since this is some function you need to take this and down. 6062 and deduct the pay and you will get your income tax payable so now quickly let us go to test your understanding two. this time we have all the three non-saving savings dividend employment is non-saving bank interest is saving dividend is dividend and tax liability pay is not given so looking at employment income itself 45 2 and 6 you know he is a higher rate taxpayer So we'll quickly do that. This time we'll be using all the three columns. Okay. Now, 45, 100. Savings is 2000. And dividend is six thousand. So your total will come here. Total income. So just do the sum function. Take all the three columns and enter. It's fine. Okay. Wait. There, yes, there is something wrong. This has to be 6,000. Now, deduct your personal allowance. Okay. Personal allowance comes here. Which is, first you will deduct from non-savings. Okay, 12, 570. Nothing to be deducted from here. Nothing to be deducted from here. You will copy paste it here. And this is your taxable income TI. Again, some function. Check this here. What is it? 4530. Now you can do your tax calculation first 32 530 basic rate so for non savings we'll do copy paste formula okay done 20% done now be careful we have savings in between okay first is the starting rate do we have the starting rate of 5000 and zero percent for savings no because the 5000 falls under non-savings non-saving itself is more than 5000 so that is lost what about the nil rate band yes we have the nil rate band but how much is it 500 or thousand it is 500 because he is an additional rate taxpayer you understanding so this will be this change to savings you have to do your tax calculation in this order only. First non-saving, then savings, then dividend. 
500 into 0%. So from 2000, 500 goes. See, if you add this to also, it will be less than 37,700. So there is no issue. So the remaining, when you take 500 from 2000, you are left with 1500 of savings. This will be taxed at basic rate, which is 20%. Okay. Now, if you, if you add this to still some portion of basic band is still left, which is covered from dividend. But it doesn't matter. First 2000 of dividend at 0%. So we'll take dividend. Dividend nil rate band. 2000. 0%. Okay. Now, you are left with 4000 of dividend. But will be the entire 4000 be at higher? No. Portion of it falls in basic because your basic band 37700 is still not fulfilled. You have to know how. We'll see. Okay. If you want to see, just take the sum function and see. Just add all and see. See, because I didn't put the bracket, it did not perform the sum function. You need to put the bracket. Just add all and see. It is still not 37,700. Right? So, what are you going to do is here equal to 37,700 minus this. not perform like that so let me just take the sum function of this and okay so 37700 minus this I have to put the equal sign equal 37700 minus this so 1170 of dividend out of 6000 will be taxed at basic rate so we'll do that which is Okay, now what's there? So, here out of 6000, 2000 went in dividend in rate band. Okay, so it's 4000 minus this. You want to know how much for the higher 2A30? Higher rate is 33.75%. So if you want to know the total, just have the sum function of this. That's it. Now, test your understanding. 3. Okay, after test your understanding, do is illustration 6. So here, we have dividend of 1500, bank interest 375. Trading income is of 3 separate situation. Basic, higher, additional, A, B and C. So we'll calculate tax liability for each situation. But income, sorry, dividend and bank interest will remain same in all the three situations. So we'll do that. Okay. Now, first it's A. Situation A. Okay, I'll write A. So non-savings will be 15,500. And savings will be 375. And dividend will be 1500. 
so there is no issue automatically you can just deduct the entire personal allowance from non savings which will give you an income of oh wait a minute Okay, the issue is here. Okay, so here you see this amount has not been changed. Why? Why this mistake happened? Because when I was putting here, I didn't take like this. I just entered manually one uh, six thousand like that. That's why next time when I changed it, that figure remained there. This is the disadvantage of not using a function and just manually entering the number. Okay, if I would have dragged like this and taken it here, automatically it would have been updated. For example, I would have taken the sum function like this, or I might have just simply dragged down like this. Okay, just click here and see. So here when I did. Now, next time when numbers change, automatically it will change. Okay. How do how how did I discover this mistake? Very in the starting only. The reason is just just make a C when you add this three, two nine three seventy five one thirty five. It does not come up to nine thousand something, right? It should come around four thousand or uh, five thousand that range. Between that range, you should have some under. So when when I looked at the number. It was very high, right? It was double this number. Like this, you have to always see your final answer. You know, just have the just see whether it falls in within that range or not. Even if you are not calculating individually, just you everyone has a basic idea, right? Because come on, these numbers are very small. If you add with this, it will not never go beyond five thousand. Also. Anyway, so coming back to this, he's a basic rate. Two nine thirty will be taxed at twenty percent. Now this three seventy five. See here first he will get the starting rate of savings. Why? Because out of five first five thousand only two nine thirty is non savings. The balance savings will be at zero percent. So if you add this two also, it will not come up to five thousand. That means this three seventy five will be taxed entirely at zero percent. Even dividend one thousand five hundred is within the two thousand dividend yield rate band. That means only two nine thirty will be taxed at twenty percent. That's it. Rest is zero. Rest is zero. So this three seventy five will be at zero, and also one thousand five will be at zero. So the only tax is five eighty six. That's it. Coming to solution B, situation B. Now non savings is fifty one five ninety five. Savings same, dividend same, everything is same. Okay. There is no issue with personal allowance because less than hundred thousand, so deducted, and your income is forty nine hundred. You are a higher rate. So this there is no issue. Okay, but it is in the higher rate. So portion of it will fall in basic, and portion of it is in the higher rate. Okay, so thirty-seven seven hundred, thirty-seven seven hundred will be taxed at twenty percent. Okay, out of thirty-nine zero twenty-five. If you want to know, just put this. Minus this, this will be at forty percent higher rate. Now, what about this? Starting rate is gone. Nil rate ban. Yes, up to five hundred you will get because you are a higher rate. So this is less than five hundred. So this three seventy five entirely zero percent. Okay. Remember when you are making notes in your notes down, you have to write why it is at zero percent and all. You have to explain. But when you are doing calculation, only calculation. 
Here you will not write in the cell y370. Only you will calculate at 0%. This also will be at 0% because falls in the 2000 nil rate band. So your dividend, your total tax will be addition of this two only. Okay, which will be 80, 70. Now, situation C. We'll change the employment. 149. 875 okay now he's a additional okay and can we deduct personal allowance this time no it will be reducing or nil nil because it is more than 120 for 150 i actually forgot the amount but it is something in that range 124 150 something like that and it's 139,000. sorry the total income if you see 151 so this will be zero this will be zero so now 37700 into 20 this and out of this take the higher rate also what would be the higher rate It would with this deduct 37700 the difference this will be taxed at 40 percent which we have taken okay now what about the nil rate ban of savings will he get will he get that No, he will not because he is an additional rate taxpayer. 151 is more than 150,000. Okay, but if you add this with this, partly it falls in the higher and partly in the additional rate. Okay, so you need to know this because it's less than 150,000. Okay, so we'll see this. So 150,000 minus 000 this. I didn't put the equal sign. Equal 150 minus this 125. That means only up to 125 could be taxed at higher rate. That is 40 percent. So that 125 comes from savings because this has already been taxed, okay? This and this. That 125 I found out because I want to know the total of 150,000, okay? If you add all this three, it adds up to 150,000. Now, out of 375, 125 is taxed at 40. The balance is at additional rate that is 40, 45%. Right. So this, if you want to know, just equal to this. Deduct this. Two fifty. Two fifty will be taxed at forty five percent. Now dividend one thousand five hundred at zero percent only. One thousand five hundred will be taxed at zero percent because dividend nil rate ban, irrespective of your tax level, you will be getting. The 2000 at zero percent only. So here, just the sum function. Just enter. 52, 5, 73 is your income tax liability. Now. Test understanding three and four. So if you see, 
we have trading income employment income both of this falls under non savings bank interest savings dividend dividend okay and pay is also given that's why they told income tax payable and we have a qualifying interest paid a new thing and if you see test understanding 4 here we have employment or if you add it it's more than 150000 okay because employment income itself is more than 150 so we have savings and dividend so let's quickly do test understanding 3 and 4 now so here trading income when you have a particular type of income let's say non savings three four different types of non savings don't add together and accumulate and put under non savings no put different different okay put the different names so that even if you make mistake in one place you will get marks on the other place what happens when you add together for example this is easy because here's only two types of non savings only that is trading and employment some of you might just add this together and show as non savings this too but show it separately trading and employment separately why even if you make mistake in one you might still get marks for the other but if you add together and show you will not get marks you know if you are wrong you are wrong because you are you are marked in that one figure but it's always better to show because separate marks are given for showing the individual incomes same for savings same for dividend usually savings and dividend has one type of income only savings might have two but dividend is usually one but non saving is the highest group where we have around four to five types so now let's do that trading income falls under non savings 11615 and employment is again under non savings 13500 employment and bank interest 3500 and your dividend is 2000 Now you total income equal to some function. Okay, thirty six one five. Now, what do you do? Go and deduct personal allowance. No, this time we have a qualifying interest. Always deduct your leaves first before personal allowance. So the interest paid is a relief. Qualifying interest paid is a relief. If you look at the pro forma before, we told that first relief, then personal allowance. So 1000, right? When we deduct relief also, order is same. Non savings first, then savings, then dividend. How we deduct personal allowance? So that 1000 will deduct from non savings okay that is interest qualifying interest thousand okay now taxable income Again, some function. So twenty nine six one five is your net income. I'm sorry, this is not taxable income. Once you deduct relief, it becomes your net income. You have to deduct personal allowance once more. No change. Twenty nine six one five less than 
100. So you will get entire 12,570. You can deduct the entire amount from non-saving itself because it's more than that amount. Minus 12,570. This you can copy paste here. Now, taxable income, some function, just to enter. Then I'm going to drag it to the other cell. So you are basically a taxpayer 17045. Now, no issue with non-savings. Just take this, copy, paste special, and apply. The basic rate 20 percent then what about savings starting rate you will not get but nil rate band you will get of thousand because you are a basic rate so thousand at zero percent out of three thousand five hundred thousand goes then you are left with two thousand five hundred taxed at twenty percent Then dividend 2000 entirely goes in the nil rate band that is 0%. So here 0. Then so if you add up, it is 2809. Okay. And deduct pay and get your income tax payable. Now, the last question. That is test your understanding four. So here your non savings was 187 450. Savings was 18 750. And dividend was 12,000. So just do the sum function. Okay. Undo. Okay. Now, what can you do? See if you look at the total. Okay. It's two hundred and eighteen, two hundred you will not get any personal allowance it will be nil so personal allowance will be nil zero okay zero so here your taxable income the sum function is here Hundred and eighteen, two hundred is your taxable income as well. Now let us do this one. Okay, so here just we are going to take this copy paste. Okay, at twenty percent. Can we do that? There's a reason why I did this because many of you do this. Straight away take the amount and apply 20%. No. In this, it's more than 150 also. Basic rate also falls there, higher rate also falls there, additional rate also falls there. So first always take the first 37,700. Then the balance. That means
150 minus this amount that is 11230 uh, 112,300 which will be taxed at higher rate 40 percent and then for the additional rate that is 187 450 so you want to know this so equal to this minus this Thirty-seven four fifty will be taxed at forty-five percent. Okay. Now, savings you will not get the basic rate. Uh, sorry, the nil rate band, nor the starting rate. Okay. But dividend still two thousand you will get. But this eighteen seven fifty. Now we are at additional rate. So now we don't have to divide it into different slags. Okay, so entire 18 750 you can tax at 40 percent. And now still 2000 will be taxed at 0 percent for dividend. And the balance 10,000 will be taxed at the additional rate of dividend. What is the additional rate of dividend? It is not 45%, 39.35%. So just drag it. And when you add, it will be a big amount. Sorry, this will not be taxed, okay? This 150 will not be taxed. Nor this one. That is just to find the balance. This will be taxed at 45 percent okay there's been a mistake that has been done that's because i didn't find the 45 percent anywhere so 81 685 is the amount that's it so now we'll be heading towards individual savings account isa ISA as you know from lecture 2 and 3 it is exempt from tax okay the objective why we are studying is so that we can save more and more tax by investing in this individual savings account so that we can easily exempt from tax and is legal right now there are some rules for ISA how to invest and what is the subscription limit and all that one must know so annual subscription limit for isa is 20000 per person okay that means in a year up to 20000 you can invest in isa and it will be exempt from tax now there are different types of isa one is cash isa one is stocks or shares isa and it does not matter in whichever type you invest limit stays 20000 only okay for spouses they will be having their own limits you and your spouse will be each having 20 20000 that means if one partner is not utilizing the 20000 the other partner can has 40000 up to 40000 of isa that would be exempt from tax now this are, so in your tax planning you will be having a question about tax planning how to save tax and all there you can mention isa that they can invest in isa and save twenty thousand. okay now 
this isa can be opened up at any time okay any individual age 16 or over you have to be 16 or over for it and you have to be a resident in uk this is for cash isa if you want to invest in stocks or shares isa you have to be 18 or over age matters and these are the tax relief isa offers first one income both interest and dividend income exempt from income tax wow when you disperse this investment it is exempt from capital gain tax as well what is capital gain tax we have not covered it later on after we finish income tax it is the cgt tax capital gain tax when we dispose our investment any long term asset when we dispose of the gain that we get let's say you have a property you are selling it off because the share price increased so that increment in price you bought it at low you are selling it when it is high the difference is your gain on that gain you have to pay tax that is known as capital gain tax c g t okay so when you dispose investment in isa that is also exempt from cgt tax so double benefit it is ex income is exempt from income tax when you dispose investment in isa that is also exempt from capital gain tax and there is no minimum holding period usually in tax when you have to when you are told that invest in certain schemes you will be exempt from tax there are some holding period some limits are there but thank god for isa there is no such limit that you have to hold it for 5 years you have to invest for 3 years nothing like that so you can withdraw the amount any time you want okay and when you are reinvesting the reinvestment of cash withdrawal from an isa does not count towards the annual subscription limit of 20000 that means each time you can withdraw the cash and reinvest in isa it does not count in that 20000 subscription limit that is separate the main types of isa cash if it's a cash isa cash isa is easier okay this are like your bank and building society accounts as well as ns ni even nsi is exempt from income tax okay but when it falls in cash isa okay nsi products where the income is not exempt from tax because two times exemption they will not give you already your cash isa is exempt so there are some products which are there in nsi that is exempt from tax but when it it is included in cash isa it is those nsi product national saving where the income is not exempt from tax okay now stocks and shares isc investment is allowed in shares and securities listed on stock exchange anywhere in the world now isc and the income tax nil rate band how it matters because you are told that 20000 is tax free okay this is a disadvantage this is a disadvantage for whom for the person who is eligible for savings income nil rate band and dividend nil rate band the tax advantages of isa has been removed from many taxpayers by the introduction of this two so because savings nil rate band and dividend nil rate band is there either you get benefit from isa either you get benefit from the nil rate band you cannot get benefit from the two things one will be removed for cash isas okay for basic and higher rate taxpayers okay the savings income nil rate band means what that even if you invest in cash isa it will not give you any tax benefit we are talking about basic and higher rate not additional why because additional tax taxpayers anyway does not have any nil rate band to take advantage of it's only the basic and higher rate so because they have savings income nil rate band even if they invest in cash isa you cannot tell them to invest in cash isa when they already have in the income nil rate band let's say 5000 of taxable income falls under savings no non savings first 5000 is savings so you can't tell them to invest in cash isa 
up to 20000 i mean that 5000 if you invest in cash isa it will be exempt from tax but anyway because savings income net rate ban is there and first 5000 starting rate is 0% so they will anyway get that advantage they don't have to invest in cash isa you understanding so the benefit that isc used to provide is no longer there and let's say the start let's not talk about the starting rate let's talk about the new rate band same for the new rate band if it's a basic rate you will get the thousand if it's a higher rate you will get the 500 okay but for additional rate taxpayers iss is beneficial because they are not getting that new rate band from savings and also for those taxpayers whose savings nil rate band has been fully utilized they also can get the advantage of isa the further 20000 they can get from isa by investing further 20000 in isis okay now for stocks and shares isis remember when we talk about cash isa we are talking about dividend nil rate band but when it comes to stocks and shares isa when we have shares and all we are getting dividend right that's why we are talking about dividend nil rate ban in the stocks and shares isa understand the connection so here because we have dividend nil rate ban of 2000 irrespective of our income tax level 2000 as zero percent so investing in stocks will not give us any benefit but if someone has utilized that 2000 then they can invest in isa then it will be beneficial for them and in addition to this chargeable gains made within stocks and shares are exempt from capital gain tax it happens maybe you are selling the shares and stocks in isa then you are having then you are making a chargeable gain right that also will be exempt from capital gain tax and this ISS will therefore be advantageous to taxpayers who make chargeable gain in excess of the annual exempt amount. There is some annual exempt amount. If someone is making beyond that amount, then they can get advantage of ISS. But if they are making less than the annual exempt amount, that amount itself will be covered by annual exempt amount. That means they are paying 0%. So that then they will not get any advantage of investing in ISS. Okay. Next is accrued income scheme. The accrued income scheme was introduced to impose a fair income tax charge on a practice known as bond washing. As you know, okay, on any government bond or you can say gills and corporate bond interest is paid and this interest is paid usually six months okay so what happens is as the interest payment date gets nearer the capital value of the securities also increase why because the purchaser is buying not only the capital value they are also buying the accrued income we'll understand this through some calculations but for now just you need to know how it works the process okay when you are selling the securities the gills and all okay they are usually exempt from cgt capital gain tax when we go through capital gain tax later on you will see there are some exempt uh, gain from cgt as well like how we have some income that is exempt from income tax there are some gains that is exempt from capital gain tax so guild is one such garment gills or garment bond is one such example so when you're selling it any gain you're making it is exempt from cgd okay but this guild has two things one is the capital value one is the income that income is from the interest right they're going to get some interest from having that guild so when they're selling it they are also losing the interest from that guild which they are going to which they were receiving before right so when you are selling the guild you are not only having the capital value you are adding a portion of interest also in that the amount that you are going to lose anyway yeah 
that's why you're inflating that capital amount you understanding so we are inflating that amount from cgt tax it is exempt okay so the element of growth that is related to the interest it has both capital value and interest element is also there right that in, that inflate in value of guilt when you are selling it the sale proceed also comes from the interest some part of interest is added to that amount so that is exempt from say so that escapes from tax okay because it is included in the sale proceed now let's go through the background of this in your taxation you will only be asked on gills okay for an accrued income scheme only guilt will be questioned usually it comes from loan loans or gills these are marketable securities there are some special tax rules for loan loans or gills but in your taxation exam only gills will be asked loan loans will not be asked now as you know whether it is loan or gilt interest is charged on it and you have to pay it on some fixed dates okay and an individual vendor who sells the guilt before that date they will not receive the interest payment why because they no longer owns it the moment they sell they no longer own it they are not the vendor so how can they charge interest on it so however part of the interest received by the purchaser was actually earned during the vendor's ownership period okay therefore the price that vendor receives from selling that gill will be inflated this is what i have explained to you so the, the amount the next interest payment that you are going to receive will already already be included in that selling price of the gill that's why that amount is inflated okay so vendor has received capital receipt when you are selling it the sale proceed and as the vendor will not receive the interest income anything apart from the interest income okay they will not receive the interest income there is no charge to income tax in respect of the increased selling price okay apart from the accrued income scheme if there is any thing that increases the selling price it will not be charged to income tax that is the whole point of this okay and any guilt and loan notes are exempt from cgt when we go through cgt there is a list of it so for now just know guilt and loan notes are exempt from cgt so when you are selling loan notes or guilt any gain you are making exempt from cgt okay so overall therefore any interest due to be paid out and included in the selling price of the guilt will escape tax now how this scheme operates first the interest is deemed to occur on a daily basis but for your taxation it is calculated on a monthly basis if it is not on monthly basis question will tell you annually quarterly yearly how but usually it will be taken in monthly only for you now the purchase price or the disposal price of that guild is divided into two portion income element capital element income is from the interest and the capital element okay now the same income element is deducted from the next interest payment received on the guild when computing the savings income for the tax year when interest is received and this scheme does not apply if your total nominal value of guild is less than 5000 if it's more than 5000 only it will apply that means any time during the tax year if it exists 5000 you can apply for this accrued income scheme otherwise it will not apply and this scheme also does not apply for those where the guilds are transferred on death so now we'll do two questions to understand how this operates better before we move on to our last part of this lecture illustration 7 and 8 in illustration 7 you have to calculate the amount assessed as interest income for the investment same 
for illustration 8. The only thing is the name and the number is changed. So first let us do illustration 7. Ahmed sold 75,000 of 6% yield including accrued interest on 31st October 2022 for 120,000. He originally acquired the guild on 1st of May 2020. Interest is payable on 30th June and 31st December each year. So you see he is selling it in October and he is getting interest in June and December. June interest no problem he will get it but 31st December interest is going to miss out because before that is selling. Okay, so let's do how are we going to calculate first we need to calculate the interest on received for 30th June 2022 because it's selling in October 2022 and the next one is until October how much interest is receiving. Okay, that means from Ju July to October. So let's do that. They have asked also in the tax year 2022-23. Okay. So now, interest received. One payment he will be receiving in June, 30th June 2020. No, no, no issue in this one. How much? 75,000. Guilt is 6%. How many months you have to take from Jan to June? See, every year 30th June and 31st December. 31st means it starts from 1st Jan. So for 2022, 1st Jan 2022 to 30th June 2022. Okay. Six months. So six months. So six months interest will be 2 to 50. No issue. This is just interest received, not accrued interest. Now, next is the accrued interest included. It's always the latest payment. I mean, the last interest that you are going to receive before you sold it off. That is the accrued interest element. Okay, included in selling price of guilt. Again, 75,000 into 6% into how many months? And by the way, this accrued will be from when? From 1st July 2022 till 31st October, not December. Because it's selling in October. How many months? 4 months. It will be 1,500. If you add 2 to 50, 1,500. 3750. This is the total interest income. Right? Now, what do you do? Your work is with this 1500. So, for CGT purpose, okay, capital gain tax, even if you have not studied, but briefly I will tell you for CGT purpose, how you will account with this. The asset sale proceed will be reduced by the amount that is assessed to income tax. Okay, for CGD purpose. What is the amount? Capital, it is 120. Because it, in, it included interest and it said that it needs to escape tax. To escape tax, you have to deduct it, the interest element, 1500. So it will be 118,500 for CGD purpose. So this will be your capital proceeds now. On this you will be charged whatever you have to charge. So any gain or loss arising is exempt from CGD as guilt are exempt assets for individuals. The reason we calculated this like this is we need to deduct it from our sale price. The crude interest element part. Always the last because this is the last payment, right? Till October. Now, we'll do for illustration 8. 25,000 of 8% guild on 
30th November 2022, paying 40,000. Interest is payable 31st Jan and 31st July. Same interest income. So first interest received will be 31st Jan. Same way how we have done for illustration 7. For 31st Jan 2023. So from Jan to June. Okay. It is Jan to June. 30th June. Will be 25,000 into 8% into 6 months. No issue. 1,000. Then. What is the amount that is included? In the cost of guilt this time you didn't sell this time you have purchased you have purchased okay paying 40,000 so here from 1st August because it says 31st July so you have calculated it Jan to June now from 1st August to when did you purchase 30th November 2022 25,000 into 8% into 4 months will be 667 okay so the 667 you have to deduct from 1000 which will be 333 three. this will be your guild interest income so when you have purchased, this is how it works. When you have sell, you add together. This is how it works. And you add together and you deduct it from the sale proceed. Like this. This payment. When it's a sale proceed. The later one, we didn't sell it. We just deduct it from the, this one. The interest that we have got till there. When we have purchased. Okay. So for income tax purpose, she can deduct from the next interest payment received the interest that was acquired at purchase. That's what you have done. You have deducted the interest payment, right? married couples planning opportunities okay a married couple can save tax by allowing a marriage allowance election to transfer a fixed amount of personal allowance from one spouse to other this we have covered in the previous lecture as well that is known as marriage allowance of a certain amount it's a fixed amount right in addition we can also transfer any asset that generates income Right, income generating asset can be transferred between the spouses at no tax to minimize their joint tax liability. And for example, you can transfer the company shareholdings. How? You can transfer them in such a way that both spouses will receive dividend income. Okay, so if they both receive the dividend of let's say 2000, 2000, they can. Utilize this. They have to pay 0% tax because of the dividend yield rate band. Right? So, 2 into 2000 because the both the spouses, if you take the nil rate band of 2000, 4000. So, they can receive up to 4000. The couple together can receive up to 4000 of dividend and save tax. Okay? Now, let us do one final question on the marrying couple before we move on to the Objective test questions. Illustration 9. For married couples, you need to calculate the couple's income tax liability. And not only that, you need to advise how they could save tax by reorganizing their investments. Ting is married to Ning. She has employment income of 54,000. She has various bank accounts which receives interest of 5625. Ning earns 20,000 training profit from self-employment each year. He has no other income. So let's quickly do that and set up in this table. There is no dividend, only non-savings and savings. So we can just Okay, anyway.
so we'll just give this total okay. for non savings 54,000 this is tings okay we are calculating tings first 54,000 and 5625 So now, some function okay. Here we are going to have total income. This is bank interest. And this is employment income. Now, again the sum function, just to do. Now, personal allowance, we are going to deduct. Which is 12,570. Now again, taxable income. Some function. So now it's forty seven fifty five higher rate taxpayer. Okay, up to basic rate thirty seven seven hundred is fine. Then this is forty one four thirty. So the balance is thirty seven thirty, which could be taxed up to forty percent. Right, the higher rate. Now it is savings, so they will she will be entitled to net rate band of 500 because additional sorry higher rate taxpayer so 500 500 into zero percent and the balance 5.25 will be taxed at 40 percent the sum so it's 11,082 this is the answer now funding funding he only has one type of income so separately you don't have to do all this okay it would be just here this is for shortcut I'm using 20,000 His income is 7430 and on this you take 20% and apply. Okay, so it would be this into this 1486. I'm going to put a color. Okay, so this is for ning and this is for ting you are done now advise them you need to write it how are you going to advise i'm not writing the answer for you but i'm going to explain you the answer tell me what can you observe look at their taxable income okay so for Ting, he's a higher rate. She's a higher rate taxpayer, and Ning, he is a basic rate taxpayer. Right? 
if you see ting has a savings nilbred band of 500 right and she is paying investment income at 40 percent you have seen it right and nil because he's a basic rate taxpayer has a savings income nil rate band of thousand right he's applicable to thousand nils rate band so what can they do they can transfer this among themselves in such a way that if ning has this interest that means the bank account the first 1000 will be taxed at zero percent and on the balance he just has to pay 20 percent so that means out of this 1000 will be taxed at zero percent if it's ning and that means the balance 4625 would be taxed at 20 percent right remember whenever you are giving advice okay in tax saving you need to calculate some amount needs to be calculated how much tax you would have saved this you have to do okay this i'm going to show you how it is done okay so how much tax you will save tell me currently Tell me. Look at the current situation and then think of the ideal situation. Okay. He is only applicable to 500, not even 1000. Okay. I mean, she think. But if it was he, the husband, he would be applicable to 1000. So the difference is what? between 500 and 1000 always you have to take the difference whenever it comes to tax saving we work on differences not 500 not 1000 so the difference between 500 and 1000 you would have saved 1000 she's already actually saving 500 so difference is 500 right so 500 how much it would be saved at if she has to pay that she would be saving the balance 500 at 40 percent that's what she's doing this 5125 okay inside that is another 500 which is taxed at 40 percent right so she would have saved 40 percent of that 500 because then it comes in 1000 right we are working on the tax saving we are not taking thousand into zero percent and doing it you would have got okay i will do like this to make things easier for you ting and ning okay this you don't have to do it this is from for me to make it easier for you to understand higher rate and ning is a basic rate because she's a higher rate at what percent she would have paid 500 she will only get 500 and she would be paying at 40 percent higher rate and he is will get thousand and he'll be paying at 20 percent okay i mean this thousand will be at zero and this 500 will be at zero but at higher rate percentage is 40 and basically 20 so this higher he would be saving entirely the full 40 percent will be saved when he becomes to basic rate and it will fall under thousand that means zero so that's why 40 percent he will save so 500 into 40 percent will be saved next you have to add with it next how much the balance balance is if 1000 goes at 20 percent then 4625 Oh, 625 this you would have paid at 20 percent just take it so in total he's going to save 1125 
925 comes from this because 4 to, 4, 625 will be now paid at 20% and the balance 500 he will be saving at 40%. So if you add together tax saving, the couple will save tax as 1125. You can do this another way which is long and I don't advise students to do that. That is, you take this into the picture. For example, you are changing this, right? Taking 1000 and then charging 4, 6, 25 and 20% and seeing how it differs. So then you can check the difference with the old income tax and the new income tax. The difference will still add up to 1125 only. But it's a long way, long cut, right? Don't take the long way because time is less in your exam. Take the shortcut, the efficient way. In any tax saving, even in ATX, you have to do the same method only. That means earlier at what amount you would have paid that tax, now you're not paying at that amount. So that is your tax saved. If you were a higher rate, you would have paid at 40%. Now you're not say you're not paying it at 40% when you're basic rate. That's why it is tax saved at this rate. Right? That's the same. And there is another way when you are because you are told to advise. What is it? You he can invest up to 20,000 in ISA. Who? Ting. Or Ning. Ting. Ting is going to invest in ISA because she is a higher rate taxpayer. So you are going to give this advice to Ting. She has to reduce her tax. Right? Up to 20,000. So there are four questions, test understanding 5, 6, 7 and 8. 5. Employment income of 16,500, savings 10,000. How much of savings will be taxed at 20%? Is it the entire 10,000? Is it 3,930, 7,930, 8,930? You have to do, you have to solve this until you reach savings income which is taxed at 20%. Please understand the question. The question did not ask you to calculate income tax liability or income tax payable. So even if you don't calculate income tax liability or payable, it's enough. But you need to reach to the stage where savings income will be taxed at 20%. Okay. So. First, savings and non-savings. Okay. Then deduct personal allowance and you will be reaching to taxable income of 13,930. As you can see, non savings is 3,930 less than 5,000. Some portion of savings will be taxed at zero, and you will be having a nil rate ban of savings. Looking at the income level, basic rate 1,000. That's why you need to calculate this. This is not very straightforward. If it was a straightforward question, okay. So, this 3,930 will be taxed at 20%. Then the balance to make 5,000, this savings will be taxed at 0%. They have wrote the starting rate. Then 1,000 nil rate ban, again 0%. Then the balance, 7,930 will be taxed at 20%. So the correct answer is not at this side. It is this one, 7,930. So the correct answer is C. Okay, test understanding 6. Out of this 4, which of is taxable for income tax purpose is it ns ni investment account company interest on company loan stock proceeds from ns and i saving certificate and profit on the sale of shares the first one is it taxable for income tax yes it is ns i investment account then it is taxable if it is saving certificate it is exempt Okay, then interest on company loan stock. Any interest on loan, it is taxable. So one and two is taxable. Three is exempt. Four, profit on the sale of shares. Shares comes under capital gain tax, not any income tax. So the only taxable for income is one and two. 
So the correct answer is C. I'll see that. See? One is exempt, one is charged to capital gain tax. Now, test your understanding seven. What is the income tax liability? Often mistakes the students make. Immediately they start applying to this 55,000. Either they apply the higher rate or they take the basic rate, apply the balance at higher rate. Of course, after taking the 2000 nil rate ban, that's wrong. One thing that students often forget is the personal allowance. The personal allowance. What about the personal allowance? Remember, if your old income is dividend, personal allowance needs to be deducted from dividend of 12,570. So that needs to be done. Okay, that's here. So from 55, deduct personal allowance, taxable income is 42,430. First 2000, of course, at zero, and then the basic rate will be 3570 because it makes up to 37700, which is 8.75. The balance at 33.75. Okay, so income tax is 4720. Correct answer is C. Now, the last question She has a salary of 140, dividend of 20, no personal allowance because 160 now how dividends will be taxed all at 39.35 c additional rate right if you add 140 and 20 160 so will all the dividends will be taxed at 39.35 uh, no a is wrong looking at it you might say 140 plus 20 yes but still you are wrong that's why whenever a question like this comes, please do a rough working somewhere. Even though you will not be given marks for working because this is choosing the correct answer out of the four. To choose the correct answer, you have to do the working. Otherwise, it's not possible for you to just pick one because calculation is required here. It is not a theory question where you can select. Like how we have done for our test understanding six. This one. This we can choose. We don't need any working. But here... You can't do that. Looks like something I know. Some numbers look very obvious. But when we do calculation, answer is often shocking. I'm sure most of you must have chosen A. Okay. And if you say D, D also does not make sense. 10,000 at 33 and 10,000 at 39.35. It doesn't. It looks very obvious, right? But without calculating, you will not be able to do it. That's why calculation is a must. If you see the correct answer is C. How will C? So with this 40, 120 becomes 160. Okay. So first, when we are taking 140, remember, because this is difficult because we are not taking it in a column or format in three columns like this. If, it, if you take it like this, it becomes very easy. That's why always do it like this. Anyway, so from first 140, when we are taking the rate, right, the band, basic rate band, higher rate band, additional rate band, we always start from non savings. So first 140, don't take 160, 140, right? It is still in the higher level because higher level is 150. So to reach from 140 to 150, another 10,000 is required, right? And out of this 10,000 of dividend, okay, in this 20,000, 10,000 falls, out of that 10,000, 2,000 will be taxed at 0% because dividend real rate ban. You are left with 8,000. So this 8,000, okay, will be taxed at 33.75, the higher rate and the balance. So out of 20, 2,000 is 0, 8,000 is basic. 10,000 gone that means the remaining 10,000 will be taxed at additional rate that is 39.35 so the correct answer is C if you see here C C I told you answer looks like A or B D very obvious right but it's C 2000 at 0% because they have given this if they would have not given this 
okay even the amount is wrong here it is 8000 at basic and 10 uh, sorry 8000 at higher 10000 at additional rate and the first 2000 at zero percent So let's summarize this whole lecture. The topic is investment income, where we have different types of income and the rates of tax. So we have savings. Under savings, we have mostly bank interest and dividends. Some exempt incomes are there, like individual savings account, then NSC, national savings certificate, and winnings. The rates of tax for savings are zero. That is the starting rate and also nil rate. We have nil rate band that is 500 and 500 for basic rate taxpayer and 1000 for higher rate taxpayer. No savings nil rate band for an additional rate taxpayer. Then we have 20% for basic rate, 40% for higher rate, 45% for additional rate, the normal rate. For dividends also same way, but the percentage differs. Basic rate 8.75%. Addition, uh, higher 33.75 additional 39.35 percent and we have the 2000 of dividend which is taxed at zero percent irrespective of their income tax level so that's it for this lecture please go and do all the questions from the revision kit covering the savings income the non-savings and the dividend and make sure that you do it on a CB platform so that you know how to use the formulas. And you should know under all the three conditions when you're basic rate taxpayer, when you're higher rate taxpayer, when you're additional rate taxpayer, how it differs. Okay, because the way personal allowance will be calculated, reduced will be different. The way uh, the savings nil rate ban will be applicable in some, it will not be applicable. But dividend nil rate ban will always be applicable. And also try to do tax planning advice. Okay. Touch questions where you need to give some tax planning advice also. So that's it. And see you in the next lecture, which is property income. Thank you for watching and take care.